The things that you've done are absolutely incredible, but what I find fascinating is if you just read your litany of things that you've accomplished, you do just assume, oh, you must be really gifted. You're shredded, you're in great shape, but when you see the before picture, it's pretty startling. Right. So what was that moment like looking in the mirror the day you decide, okay, wait, enough is enough? Well, it was pretty crazy for me. It, um, it, it took a while to get to that point where enough was enough. Um, what happened, I, I came home one night from work spraying for cockroaches. And um, long story short, I turned on the, the um, Discovery Channel. I saw some guys going through Navy SEAL training. And they were going through Hell Week and they were getting their ass just beat. You know, in and out of the water, guys ringing the bell. Um, they were just suffering. And I was weighing like 297 pounds. And I had to make a change in my life. You know, I was at an all-time low, and I wasn't going anywhere, and I was exactly what everybody said I was going to be, which was nothing. So I had to make a change. What was it about seeing suffering? That's, that's really interesting, and I actually get it, but I want to hear you explain it. Why suffering was the thing that triggered that thought? Well, for me, growing up, I came from a horrible background. I got called nigger every day of my life growing up, um, lived in a small town. The Klan headquarters at that time was about um, 20 minutes from where I lived, the, uh, one of the high ups in the KKK son sat behind me in two classes, so he called me nigger all the time. Got my first car, they spray painted nigger, we're going to kill you on it. So I was just an insecure, scared kid. And the only way I could find myself was to put myself through the worst thing possible. Yeah. How'd you have the insight though? Like that's so counterintuitive. Like most people, that's precisely what they're trying to get away from. Right. So what was it in you at that moment? You're overweight, you've been bullied essentially your entire life up to that point. What makes you go, all right, motherfucker, like that, that's what I've got to do. Well, no one was helping me out. So my mom, my dad made my mom kind of irregular. So she worked three jobs, went to college full time. So she was never around. One time this, this person, drew a picture of me and you know said we're gonna kill you nigger on my Spanish notebook and I took it to my principal and my principal said they spelled nigger Niger that was the best advice he can give me so long story short what I realized was no one was here to help me and the feeling I had every morning I started shaving my head when I was 16 years old and the feeling I had every morning I looked in the mirror was horrible and I didn't want to feel like that anymore and how I felt was a a kid going nowhere, a kid that was scared, and most kids will accept that and look for help. But the best thing that happened to me, no one helped me. No one felt sorry for me. Mm. No one looked at me and said, like this day and age, they'll, they'll take you in and they'll tell everybody, stop picking on this person. Back then, they didn't care. The KKK marched in our 4th of July parades. <laughs> they had to stay 100 yards back, but they marched in it. Wow. That's how this town was. And my mom cared about me, but my dad took our soul. Mm. And she you know, did the best she could. I had to figure out I wasn't going to be a punk kid all my life. So the only way I could turn it around was to suffer. I had to build calluses in my brain the same way I built calluses on my hands. So I broke the Ginsburg World's record for pull-ups a long time ago, but I failed at it twice. And I did 67,000 pull-ups in trying to break this record. So to do 4,030 pull-ups, I had to do 67,000 for training for that. Wow. And so what I realized is for me to become the man I wanted to become, I saw myself as the weakest person God ever created. But I never blamed God for anything he did to me. So I wanted to change that to be the hardest man ever created. Am I that? I don't know, but you had to have a goal. And my goal when I was sitting there, not going to school, being bullied, being having no self-esteem, my goal was the only person that's gonna turn this person around is me. The only way I can turn it around is put myself through the worst things possible a human being can ever endure. And that'd be the only way that I can build this brain to handle anything that comes in front of it, callousing my mind right. through pain and suffering.